give God a praise Come this morning. On. How many of you are excited? Yes, amen. amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. So how many of you are rejoicing? Yes. See, that's awesome when you can be in Michigan in this time of year rejoicing. <laughs> amen. 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 Everybody say amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. I'm just giving them time to set the mic in the back. Everybody say amen. amen. <coughs> Lift your hands up. Give them some praise this morning. Amen. Amen. I just want to share with you this morning how the love in the church Doctor, pastor, bishop, the love of your people is a reflection of your leadership. Uh, the servant attitude when I walk in. Give a Lord a clap offering for the other students and the leadership. And the, uh, the praise and worship is to be commended. Uh, some churches I go to, it's, you could ice skate down the center of the aisle. <laughs> It's so cold, I mean, but there's life here because the Spirit of God is here and the presence of the Lord. I commend you, praise team. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your presence that's here. I thank you for your word that's here today, Lord God. I need you to convey what is on our hearts to the people today. We need you. Lord, we honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We give you first place. Father, I thank you for the love that's in this house, and the people that are here. Bless the time, the word, and the ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, a woman is out one night at church services and she comes home and she's an elderly woman and when she comes home she hears a burglar and she's startled and she quotes a Bible verse Acts 2.38 repent and be baptized in the Lord Jesus and the burglar just froze and didn't know why. So she called the police, and the police came out, and they arrested him and uh, looked over it. The policeman said to the burglar, why are you just standing there frozen? All she did was mention a Bible verse to you. He says, Bible verse? All I heard is saying she's got an ax at 238. Amen? <laughs> Some of you get it. It's coming. <laughs> I consider it an honor to be with some of the people that are here today and share it with you. Dr. Costa, Dr. Lon Gardner, people I've just met, old friends, amen. Um, I have a word for you, God, for you today, I believe. I get excited about presbyteries, and that's going to happen after the morning service, amen? I encourage you. Uh, I have a, a, a familiar Bible verse on the screen, please. Isaiah 60. All right. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. 
Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Amen. Say, arise, arise. and shine. shine. I need some audience participation other than you, Dad. When I say rise and shine, I want you to stand up, wait a minute, and do this. Are you ready? Arise and shine! Smile. Now go to somebody else and say, Arise and shine! <laughs> Give the Lord a clap offering. You may be seated. Arise in Hebrew means to stand and move up higher. Stand and move up higher. Enlightened in the, is the word for shine in the Hebrew. So, arise and shine. Stand and move up higher. Come on now. Give the Lord a clap offering. Okay. Now, let me give you this a setting. It's, you may be seated. The setting of chapter 60 is interesting. It's about 690 B.C. In chapter 60, the rest of chapter 60 is about the blessings, the increase, the goodness of God, and God turning the situation around. However, if you study chapter 59, the chapter before 60, you will find the, an angry God with people. National corruption. People who are into sin. It mentions the word sin, iniquity, and transgression in this chapter 59. And in chapter 59, talk about the lives of the people and their hearts. This is God's covenant people. Then comes 60. And then the rest of 60, once the people repent, say repent. Once the people repent, say repent. Again, say repent. Then comes the blessings and the increase. So 59 is before 60. But let's look at these verses. Arise and shine! Go to three people, tell them arise and shine. He says, the glory will be risen and stand upon you. Everybody say glory. glory. How many of you know that the decline in the nation at that time, we make it look like romper room in these hours. Hello? Terrorist attacks. The state of New York passing an abortion law saying nine months you can kill a baby. We're just moral decline. But chapter 60, arise and shine. Look at Exodus 40, verse 34, 35, and 38. When you arise and shine, you create a force against darkness. That's right. You push back the darkness That's right. by letting the light shine. You drive back the darkness in the world, in the things around you. Now, let's look at the effects. Put up Isaiah 60, one more minute. Let's look at this again. Start with verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, we're going back. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. So and light has come, and darkness must what? Go. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Say so the glory is risen upon thee. It's upon thee. Okay. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. This talks of depression, despondency, and despair upon the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Now the Lord shall arise upon thee. Okay. 
And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Glory will be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now, the Gentiles speaks to the heathen, unsaved. They shall come to the what? Light. Then it says the what? The kings to the brightness of thy rising. Kings, leadership, people in authority. And the third group he points out, go, go, go to the next verse. Lift up thine eyes around about and see as all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. So there he talks about three sets of people. The Gentiles, kings, places, people in authority, leadership. And then he talks about your sons and daughters. So God's going to begin to draw as we arise and shine, let our light go forth. He'll draw your unsaved Gentiles. He'll draw your sons and daughters back to you into the kingdom of God. They'll be drawn sons and daughters, spiritual and natural sons and daughters. And in addition, people in authority and people in the government will be drawn, amen, to this house and will be drawn to the new anointing and the things that are coming upon here. Everybody get ready to say amen. amen. Say, say glory. glory. Now, did you ever read the Bible verse one day and it says something? And you read the Bible verse a year later and it says something else? I know there are different translations for the word I'm about to share with you. But the word glory is the word D-O-X-A, D-O-X-O. Dox. But there's different words that mean glory. Now, if I say glory, you would think what? The manifest presence of God, right? How many would believe this? Would you believe it? It was as simple and straightforward, knowing there's different ways to Look at the Bible verse. First, let's go to Exodus. In the Amplified. Then the cloud, the Shekinah, God's visible dwelling presence. Say God's glory. The Shekinah glory of God, God's manifest presence. Covered the tent of meeting. And the glory and brilliance of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud remained on it, and the glory and brilliance of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Say glory of the Lord. Now, he, he talks about the Shekinah glory, the manifest presence of God, and we have different ways to describe the glory of the Lord. But arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord shall be what? Upon you. Shall be seen, shall be revealed. Okay? All right! Shine! Now go up and give him a big smile. Look up, give him a smile. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. When you think of God's glory resting on your life, in this hour, prophetically, even around the globe, Prophets are saying that this year is key to the presence of God. So get ready, Covenant Christian Center, because we're all yelling, rah, 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 yay. But it's going to require us to come into his presence. And that is going to cost you time and energy. How many of you hear what I'm saying? So what's going to be effective in this house in, in, it should be effective in all houses, is the presence of God. Not the next potluck dinner. <laughs> Not sitting and talking about somebody because of what they wore, what they look like, or what they're doing. Not getting all over uh, calling it church because we just happen to come together and there's awesome music. The presence of the Lord is got to manifest not just in this house, but in us. 
We've got to be glory pots running around, bringing in the souls into the kingdom. How many of you hear what I'm saying? So we can't say, well, I didn't get a good word today. Pastor didn't preach what I wanted to hear or whatever. Or when are we getting out of here? I want to go to lunch. We got to say, oh, my God, it's exciting to be in church this morning because I'm filled with God's glory and you're filled with God's glory and the presence of God can't help but do anything but fall. That's what's going to win people. God's glory, God's presence. Isaiah 60 talks about the future glory of Zion. Now, Let's look at this. When the glory cloud descends, or the mountain, they went up to the mountain in Exodus 20. Is that right? There was rumbling. There was thunder. There was lightning. There was the fire of God. Is that right? And the judgment and the fire of God. And the fear entered the people. And there's a place that some people need to be shaken with fear. Amen? But when we get over into... Mount Zion, it's grace. The mountain represents something a little different. Grace. One, the fear, the tremblings, smoke, fire. But now let's look at a scripture. Several years ago I was reading and I ran across a scripture. And I pray this morning that you see something with a new light. Raise one of your hands, both of your hands. Say, Lord, Lord. open my eyes to see this. Amen. Amen. This is what I saw from a new perspective. And I want you to believe the way it's put out here. Amen? Let's not try to rationalize it. It is what it is. Exodus, please. I mean, yes. yes. No, no, Exodus. Oh, okay. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was no, no. on. Next verse, please. Exodus 38. Okay, go ahead. No? So verse 38. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel. Exodus 33. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now, stop right there. This is Moses talking to the Lord. He says, show me thy glory. Now, let's look at the response of what God does. We're talking about the glory of God. It can mean different things. Let's look at what he says. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Go down to verse 21. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Say rock. The rock of Jesus Christ. Go back up and look at this again. These two verses, 18 and 19. He says, show me your glory, Lord. And look at what he says. I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Say goodness. And I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Say graciousness. Gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Say mercy. He asked God to show him his glory. And he shows him his what? Mercy, grace, and goodness. The mercy of God at times is the grace. The glory of God is the grace of God. The mercy of God and God's goodness on his people. Everybody say amen. 
What, what about the fear of God? Yes. What about repentance? Yes, yes, yes. There's a time for the smoke to come down from the mountain. But I want to tell you that when God said, show me his glory, he said, I'm going to show you my mercy. I'm going to show you my grace. I'm going to show you my goodness. That's what I'm going to show you. Sometimes, Pastor, I want to take people and I just want to shake them and shake them and choke them and lay hands on them. Give them a five-fold impartation. Amen. But the Bible says, show them your what? His glory. Show them what? Mercy. Show them what? Grace. And show them thy what? Goodness. Everybody say amen. amen. And that's how we're going to dispel the darkness, by showing God's glory to people, by telling people when they miss it and they fall over and over again, and you want to just, just say, give them mercy, give them grace, and give them goodness. I want to give them something else, Lord. <laughs> give mercy and goodness. Hello, show them. Your glory. Show the glory of the Lord. Amen. Tell people about his goodness, about his mercy in your life, and about his kindness in your life. Now, let, let, let's, let's bring this forward. Next verse. Amen. Go to Colossians, please. You know this verse. To them, God would make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Say glory. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, God's glory is inside of you. That's the hope for the future, God's glory. So if God's glory is in you, guess what's in you? His goodness, his mercy, and his grace has been applied to your life. Come on now. His mercy, his goodness, and his grace. And when you miss it and you make mistakes, mercy and grace and goodness. That is what is going to dispel. Arise. Shine. Smile at somebody. Amen. Arise. Shine. Smile. Say goodness. goodness. Mercy. mercy. And grace. Shine out of me. Mercy, goodness, and grace. Mercy, goodness, and grace. You may be seated. Amen. Yeah, I, I want to show you a DVD clip. Can we just uh, uh, just slide away for a few minutes? A, a, a few. It'll come back. Amen. Just stay with me. Would you put on this DVD, please?
Christ lives in you. The hope of glory lives within you. God's goodness, God's mercy, and God's grace is within you because the glory of God is within you. And that's what will dispel the darkness in the world and the corruption in the world. And God will draw sons and daughters unto you. Come on, natural and spiritual. And God will draw those and people in authority and leadership unto you. And God will draw, come on, the unsaved Gentiles to you, the heathen. Give the Lord a clap off. Everybody say amen. to a very familiar passage of Scripture, New Testament. Matthew. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You see, one of the things I want you to just get in your mind this morning is you are a supernatural, divine being having a human experience. Amen. Hello? You're not a human being running around to, trying to get God's glory in you. When you come to Christ and you're truly washed in the blood and saved, there's change. And you become a supernatural, divine being. You become his you're having a human experience. And so when we begin to really understand this, then we get it, it's not about us. Amen. It's about him. Yes. And this life becomes one where we want to go and do things for God, for others. We're not measuring our walk by that. Hello? Hello? You're doing it just because you are this divine being having that human experience. So you're not waking up in the morning going, I read 10 pages of the Bible. I say 10 prayers. I do that. You just do this because you have that supernatural relationship with a very holy God that's changing you. Does that make sense? Doing good works, it's not just about doing them, but how many of you would know when you meet up with people, they're like going, wow, what is it about you? There's something different about you. I need whatever you've got. How many of you are getting this? I used to teach at an all-girls academy hmm, over 40 years ago, hallelujah. But... Um, there were, you know, I taught in a, a Catholic school, and there were two little nuns that were had to be about in their 80s at that time. And they would come down the, uh, the hallway every morning, and I had an office just next to theirs. And so I would play my little worship music in my office, and every time I saw them, I would go, Good morning, sisters. Praise the Lord. And they would just look at me and just shake their heads and keep walking. And finally, one morning, they were coming down the hall, and they said, Dr. Cheryl, well, not Dr. Cheryl, they said, Cheryl, they said, why do you walk around saying, praise the Lord? I said, because, I don't know, I just praise the Lord. They said, well, what is it? And I said, well, you praise the Lord, you're nuns, don't you praise the Lord? And I said, I love Jesus with everything in me, as best I know how. And they said, how do we get that? And right there in the middle of that hallway, I prayed with them. And the tears began to shed, to just, you know, run down their cheek. And they just thanked me, and we kept, just went on our way. Well, the next morning, I'm coming down the hallway, and here they are walking side by side with these huge grins on their face. And they go, good morning, Cheryl. Praise the Lord. <laughs> See? Whatever's in you has to be catchy to other people. They don't have to understand it. They just have to see it, and they're going to want it. Does that make sense? You do because of whose you are. Does that make sense? I'm going to tell you, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm going to tell them myself, and don't judge me. Sometimes we just need grace. And uh, I think I shared this last time. I've been married 64 years. Amen. 
I've been married to her for 32. She's been married to me for 32. That's 64 years. <laughs> Sorry about that. And when I was first married, uh, I don't do and still don't do laundry. I don't know how to turn it on. I don't know how to turn it off. I, I just buy the machine and put it there. But I say amen. So we were married and uh, newly married, and she would not do some errands. And uh, I, I learned God's grace through this. And um, do some errands, and so she calls me. Now she, I told her before I got married. Before I got married, I told her, I said, I don't do laundry. I don't do wash machines and certain things I don't do. You understand? Will you accept me? She says, I will. And this probably area won't change. I'm not open to change. She says, okay, no problem. She said, I do. I will. So all these, these years I've been married, I haven't done laundry still, Amen. But this, but this time, she calls me on the phone, and she says, can you take the clothes out of the wash machine and put them in the dryer? So I took the clothes of being a husband out of the wash machine and put them in the dryer. Well, she comes home about half hour later, and she's yelling at me in the kitchen. And I, because in the kitchen is where the wash and dryer is. And I says, why are you yelling? She says, why didn't you turn it on? You didn't tell me to turn it on. You told me to take the clothes out of the washer and put them in the dryer. And that's what I did. You don't have enough common sense to turn it on? You didn't say turn it on. And it ended up, I was newly married, and this ended up in a big fight. I was so hurt and so crushed because all I could see that I was obedient to my wife. I did what she said. Why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling when I did exactly what you said to do? Take the clothes out of the washer, put them in the dryer. I don't know how to do it. Then I took them out of the washer. And you don't have enough common sense to turn it on? You didn't say turn it on. And we got in this big fight. I was broken and crushed. And I went to the guy and said, Grace, Grace, Grace. Mercy. That's a true story. It took me three days, my spirit, to come out. Yes, three days I was brokenhearted because I was obedient to my wife and exactly what she said. Three days. So pray for me, amen? We all need grace. Now, let's look at this. I want to give you a new tool for warfare. Put up Zechariah, please, a familiar passage of Scripture. Something new that I've incorporated in my prayer life. Zechariah. Amen. Chapter 4. There we go. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, not by your human reasoning, not by the way it should be done, but by my spirit. Okay. Who art thou, O great mountain? Everybody Be say mountain. Mountain. Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. He says, Thou art a mountain, Thou shalt become a plain. How many have mountains in their lives? You want it to become a what? Plain. But look how he says to do that. I, fasting and prayer and word and standing in faith, all these things are involved. But it's interesting what he says here. He says, Shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Shouting, grace, grace, grace unto the mountain. Arise. Shine. I want you to take your mountain, and I want you to begin to cry out grace to it. Are you ready? So, so you take the mountain, whatever it is, finances, a car, a home, a payment, a wife, a relationship, and begin to cry out, grace, grace, come on. Grace, 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 grace. Grace, 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 gr
Grace. 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 Grace to relationships. Grace to finances. Grace. 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 To souls Grace. to fill Grace. his house. Grace. 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 Hallelujah. Next time you face a mountain, I want you to begin your prayer life when you don't know what to do. You don't know what uh, praying time. There's a time to pray in tongues. There's a time to fast. There's a time to stand in faith. There's a time you just look at that mountain and you say, Grace, grace, be thou removed. Grace, grace, come down. You're not a mountain, you're a plane. You ain't no big thing in my life no more. You're a plane. Grace, 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 grace. Shout, the Bible says, shout grace to the mountain. Shout grace to the mountain. Amen. I believe there are people here this morning that need the grace of God, need mercy. I know it's 27 days into the new year, but you need the grace and mercy and the goodness of God in your life. Amen? I'm going to hear and say, that's me, Dr. Jerry. I need a, even now already the 27th, I need a fresh start with God. A fresh start in your word time, a fresh start in your prayer time, a fresh start in your commitment, dedication, and soul winning, and growing this church. Amen? Whatever area it is, I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. Whatever secret sin, it doesn't matter. Amen? Whether it be problem, something you watch, whether it be something that you shouldn't be doing, you know you shouldn't be doing, whether it be cheating on your income taxes, Amen? <laughs> We have somebody here to help you with that, amen. But it, it, if it be cheating on your income taxes, anything, it's time to repent. It's time to say, God, I need mercy and grace. I need your goodness in my life. Amen. Let me see those lifted hands. That's me, Dr. Piscopo. If you want a fresh commitment and you raise your hand, come on down here. Come, come on. Come on, stand down here. I want to recommit. I want a fresh dedication. And if you're not born again and you're not saved, come on, lift your hands, come down. If you're not born again and you're not saved, come on down here. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you know you're not right with God, come, come, line up across the front. All those that raise their hands, come. Even if you're preachers and pastors, you raise your hands. You know why? Because we all need a fresh commitment at times with God. fresh commitment. Come on, fill up the altars. I need a fresh commitment. I need his mercy and his grace in my life. I don't care if you've been saved for years. Your fire has gone out. Yeah, let me put it to you another way. If there was a time that you read more and prayed more and fasted more and witnessed more and we're closer to God than you are now, even though you're in the church, even though you tithe, even though you're his but you don't have that fire you used to have, like I said. You don't read and pray and witness like you used to. You've slid back even though you're in the church and don't even realize it. It's called deceit. Oh, I can remember 10 years, 15, 20 years ago, I was so on fire for God. I used to read and pray and witness and share. Now you go to church barely and tired. That's all you can do. It's time that God's saying, fresh commitment. It's time God is saying, you need my mercy and grace. Anyone else? I want to recommit my life this morning. I want to get right with God. I need his mercy and his grace and his goodness. Anyone else? Amen. All right. Those of you here, take the hands of the person next to you standing across the aisle, please. Father, I bless those that are standing here for a recommitment this morning, for a fresh dedication, 
fresh fire. Father, they need your mercy and your grace and your goodness, Lord God. I thank you that you granted them the gift of repentance. Turn their hearts around in the new year and show them a new way to live and a new way to walk. I bless them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for your mercy, for your grace, and your goodness. I turn around. I make a decision to change. Lord, grant me the gift of repentance. Lord, I confess before you. I need you. I make you the Lord of my life. I make a fresh commitment. I rededicate and recommit my life back to my Lord and Savior, Jesus. Give the Lord a clap offer. And amen. I, I appreciate your honesty, but I also want to pray for those that are born again, or you just got saved now, or rededicated your life. You say, Dr. Piscopo, you know, I hear all, them always praying in tongues. I don't, but I would like to. Okay? It's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you're here this morning, and you belong to the Lord because you, you're saved or born in a commitment, or you just made a commitment this morning, but you've not received the Holy Spirit, I want to pray for you personally, and you will receive it. Amen? Amen. All you need is to be honest this morning. Is there anyone here? Anyone here? Who is it? Lift your hands. Is there anyone? Come. Anyone else? Don't come up to me after. Come now. Even if you're seated in the, in the pews and you want, come. Come over here now. I am born again. I don't have the Holy Spirit. I would like it. This has nothing to do with going to heaven. It has to do with the endowment of power. Amen. That comes after. Let's stand over here. Those, I'll, I want those that, that need the Holy Spirit to lift your hands so I know who you are. I need some oil. Can I have some oil? Don't go anywhere. We're going to shout grace in a minute. Amen. <laughs> Can I have some oil? All right, let me see those hands lifted up. How long have you been a Christian? Two years. How long have you been a Christian? Two weeks, amen. You? It's your first time that you really understand me. First time coming here. Fourth time, amen. I'm going to lay my hands upon you, you're going to receive, okay? Now, when you receive, he's not going to just speak through you. Because faith without works is dead. So you've got a part to play. I'm going to lay my hands upon you. I want you to take a deep breath. And I want you to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, worship you, Jesus. I want you to say, whatever it'll just come out of you. No English, you got it? All right, lift your hands. Say, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Great man of God, our Father and the Lord. Amen. Walking through the high and hard places. Anybody got a few of those? Amen. Brother, yep, you just raised your hand. Come on. What is your first name? Chris, I just really sense the Lord saying that your faithfulness is like a huge uh, banner that God looks at you and he sees faithfulness, he sees commitment and loyalty. And the Lord says that in this next season, there's going to be some doors opening for you. And God says what was in the past that you considered a failure, God says he's turning it around. It's going to be a success in this next season. God says to tell you that uh, you're not a murmurer or complainer. God says when you just get disappointed or you get, uh, you know, somebody uh, upsets you, God says you don't complain, you just take it to God. 
and you say, okay, God, whatever. And God says, so get ready to see uh, even some doors of teaching opening because God says what you have, he desires to impart to his kingdom. And God says uh, that you have some decisions to make. There have been some things in your uh, coming into life and you've just got some decisions you got to make and you're going, I don't know, what do you, what do you think? And God says, you are on the right track doing the right thing. So God said, just follow his heart, which is your heart. And God says, I trust you and I call you friend, Chris. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's one called the bread that satisfies. Amen. Intense hunger for the presence of God. This is a hot one. Okay. Sister with the baby. It's not your baby, but that's okay. <laughs> Amen. The Lord says to tell you that this season he is just, your intercession is coming before the Lord. He's even woken you at crazy hours. And the Lord says he's going to intensify that prayer because God says his presence, you are coming into his presence like never before. And God says, you've just been crying out, Lord, I need change. I need change. I need change in me, in what's going on around me. The Lord says, get ready to receive it, embrace it, and know that uh, you are a woman of stature and you are a woman of authority. And God says, because you have embraced authority and you know how to come under authority, God says he's going to increase your authority. So God says get ready for even greater responsibility in the kingdom, but also some healing, some healing that is coming even into that prayer closet because God says he sees the wounds, but he's going to cause you to become a victor over them, not a victim to them. Amen? Praise the Lord. Here's one called the work of the potter's hands. Amen. How many of you are in the potter's hands. Amen. How many of you find he's squeezing and <laughs> shaping and all that good stuff? Sister, red hair back there, beautiful. Aha, I got a feeling you're doing some cooking here today. All right. The Lord says to tell you that it has been really a rough road this last season. There have been some struggles. There have been some loss, some despair. You're, you know, people are going, just have hope. And you're going, oh my God, what is that? And the Lord says to tell you that you're coming right around the corner. God says the enemy thought he really had you this last you know, week or two even. But the Lord says, no, you're coming right around the corner. And God says, winter is over for you. God says, it's time now. Get ready to accelerate accelerate. And God says, even in the next couple weeks, you're going to see some suddenlies turning around because God says, you've even seen one recently, a suddenly, and it's given you hope, but you've thought, oh, I better not get too excited. But God says, no, get excited because God says, you know him, you walk with him and you know his presence. So get excited because God says, this next season is summer and spring for you, says the Lord. Amen. Sister here in the end, can I, can I see you for a minute? Yes. Here's one called, written by a man named Nick the Greek. He's a part of us. Uh, he got a life sentence in prison, 25 to life. And God did a miracle and got him out in about five years. He was a hit man for the mob. He wasn't the mob because he was Greek. He wasn't Italian. But they contracted him to do to do hits. A powerful testimony. Uh, I want you to have this. Would you grab that briefcase right there for me? And what is your name? Tanya. Amen. There we go. Tanya. Okay. I want you to begin to walk with that. And the spirit of grace would say unto thee, I've noticed your heavy burdens. I noticed what you've been carrying, says the Lord. I noticed 
the excess weight that's upon your spirit and the worries that are concerned about those that are close to you and around you. And natural and spiritual people, says the Lord, in the heart of the intercessor, it has become burdensome at times. But the Lord says, I'm going to take your weight and I'm going to take your burdens. And you're going to walk with a new pep and a new step in the next season of your life. Things are about to turn around. I lift off the heavy weights and the heavy burdens. So praise me and worship you as you're going to a new place. Your life is about to turn around, says the spirit of the living God. Mercy, grace, and goodness shall be yours, saith the Lord. All right. I've only got a I prophesy and you get the hug. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. That's okay. I brought some gifts for this special, special day. Uh, some things I want to give away. I've got about 20 of them. Come, freely. It's free. Come. Who wants them? All I got to do is say praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, 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 thank you, Jesus. Oh, I just had one left. You got a double portion. Come back here. Young lady, come back here. Amen. I, oh, did you get one? Oh, you got one. There you go. You got a double portion. Amen. Are, are, amen. Cheryl, my wife's got a word for you. Amen. Is that your wife there? Come on up here. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Just take hands. I just really sense the Lord saying that you have been really, you, when you found God, you just, it changed your whole lives. And God said that uh, he has just been in the center of everything that you have been walking through. And the Lord says that even the struggles of the past season uh, it kind of upset you, kind of, there was some loss. And the Lord says, uh, he is going to fill that void. He is going to really come in and bring comfort and peace and fill that for you. The Lord says that uh, you are not retiring in your walk with God. You're refiring. And God said everything the enemy used to try to destroy, God says, get ready, it's going to be for my good and you're good in my glory. The Lord says you too have the hand of God upon your lives. So don't despair. Don't give up hope. Because God says as you press closer into him, he's going to form like a glory cloud over you to protect you, to keep you. And the Lord says just uh, really wrap yourselves up in God and in each other. And God says as you do, others will seek you out and say, what is it? What do you have? And it will give you opportunity to share God's goodness. God says uh, there is provision coming. There is that resource, those things you need to go to the next level, even in this next season. So God says he's going to change some things. And you're going to have a kick in your step and a pep, and you're going to know what joy is again. Because God said this is your season to be filled. Amen? Where do you go to church? God's going to put a hope within you. A hope to believe to a new level. The message of goodness, mercy, and grace is going to be your portion. He's going to turn things around. He's heard your prayers. I see you walking in the kitchen and just talking to God. And God says, you're on his prophetic timetable. You're not ahead or behind. The Lord says, I'm going to go back way behind. You remember when I spared your natural life? The enemy tried to take your natural life. It was I that spared you, says the Lord, my angels. 
It could have been worse. And Lord says, because the destiny is ahead. Get ready. As I lay before you the next six, eight months, by the end of this year, when you look back, you will see a change in your financial situation, a change in your home, a change in those around you, says Lord, and those that are close to you. Lord says, begin to pray together and begin to believe together for my goodness, my mercy, my grace. For this year, you will experience it like never before, says the Lord. Amen. If you ever leave Milford Assembly, God's got a great church for you right here, Covenant Christian Center. Amen. don't want to miss part two and I'm going to tell you why you're going to see a DVD clip and you're going to see the people change in this clip those that had judged the person those that said things and they're making and in the end they take note amen but before that put up the scripture one last time arise shine Give your neighbor a big smile. The word arise in the Hebrew means step up a little bit higher. We're going to come a little bit higher because as we set this bishop in order, this apostolic call, amen, this becomes an apostolic church and you become an apostolic people and it becomes an apostolic movement. You are God's glory. Because God lives what? In you, the hope of glory. You're his glory. You're to tell people about his what? His goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Amen. Look at this. And he said, Moses said to God, I beseech thee, show me your glory. I want to know what your glory is. Lord, show me your glory. He's asking God. And this is God's response, the next verse. Remember, glory can say different things in different passages of Scripture. His response is, I will make all my goodness. Show me your glory. I'm going to show you my goodness. It shall pass before thee. I'm going to show you my glory. Show me your glory, God. And I'll proclaim the name of the Lord, that's Jesus, <laughs> before thee, for us. And will be gracious. Show me your glory. He said, show his grace to them. Show me your glory, Lord. And I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. Next time you think of the glory, even when you read scriptures in, in the Gospel of John, the word glory is used. Nine times. Read John 1, verse 2, and, and chapter 2, verse 14, you get home. It talks about the king and feast, that God would show his glory. He duplicated the wine, water into wine. He says, so he could show his glory. What was it? Show his what? Goodness, and his mercy, and his grace. When you read about John next time and you see it used over and over again the word glory think of his mercy and his grace and his goodness shout grace 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 as an apostolic people when you face a mountain next time yeah sometimes we gotta fast sometimes we gotta uh, turn around repent ask for God for the gift of repentance Different tools, different times. But there's sometimes I face a mountain. Me and my wife, we don't know what to pray. We've prayed in the spirit. We fasted. We stood. This thing ain't moving. I'll tell you, I use this. When I got this revelation, I used, it says, shout until the, didn't say, grace, 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 grace. The, the Bible says in the King James Version, it didn't say quietly. It didn't say nicely. It said what? Shout to the mountain. What do we shout? Get in one of us. Grace, 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 
grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace, grace. Yeah, come on, you got the message. Now, you may be seated for the last time. I've got you up and down and moving around today. I want you to watch this clip. And I want you to watch the other players that judged him. And watch as they see the tenacity. Uh, I, I looked at this and I says, this is, hold on a minute, hold on. We'll turn, start, get ready in a minute. And look at the tenacity of this person that walked, that continued on. And look at the change in the people around. Amen? Roll the clip, please. So, Coach, how strong is Westview this year? A lot stronger than we are. You already written Friday night down as a loss, bro? Well, not if I know we could beat them. Come here, bro. You too, Jeremy. What, am I in trouble now? Not yet. I want to see you do the death crawl again, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to go to the 30? I think you can go to the 50. The 50? I can go to the 50 if nobody's on my back. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. Okay. You going to give me your best? I'm going to give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. I get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right. Let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground. Just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go. Show me good effort. That way, Brock. You keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, Brock. Good strength. That's it, Brock. That's it. Not the 20 yet? Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, Brock. You got more in you than that. I ain't done. Just rest in a second. You got to keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. Keep driving. Keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. They're getting That's real it. quiet. Your very best. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving. Don't quit till you got nothing left. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. Come on. Keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know he's heavy. I'm playing out of strength. Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going, you hear me? You keep going. You're doing good. You keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts. You keep going. You keep going. It's all hard from here. 30 more steps. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Keep going. Burn. And let it burn. burn. It's all hard. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Come on. Keep going.
You are the most influential player on this team. If you walk around defeated, so will they. Oh, tell me you can't give me more than what I've been seeing. You just carried a 140 pound man across this whole field on your arms. Rob, I need you. God's gifted you with the ability of leadership. Don't waste it. Huh? Can I count on you? Yes. Coach? What is it, Jeremy? I want a 160. That's what I've observed in this church and in your life. You kept on going. You kept on pressing for holiness and purity. This is why today is today. It's a walk. That DVD is a reflection of both of your lives. And all the extra burdens you carried and will carry, not only for your people now, but for other ministers and ministries. Don't miss the next part. We're just getting started. Everybody say amen. Isn't, isn't God good this morning? People rededicated their lives, got baptized with the Holy Ghost, got healed. Come on, stand to your feet and give God a shout and shout, grace, 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 grace. has a ringing on his finger signifying authority and power of a place he will now come to. He's called of God in this office, but he's sent by the church. Amen? Amen. In a robe of righteousness, right standing for the new place that he will stand and walk with God. I learned this in, where's Dr. Gardner's Bible school? Amen? Many years ago, Acts 13. Your preachers will know this. Read this. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, I fasted this week. And Dr. O, I said, go out and take a few days and fast and see God. As they were fasting and praying. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, Paul, for the work to which I have called them. In other words, separate now. The implied there in the Greek is separate now unto the work I have what? Called them past tense then after fasting and praying they laid their hands on them in approval and dedication and sent them away on their first journey notice that it says simply approved and dedication and sent them away for their new journey now, if you could put that up in the KJV, also, I would appreciate that. One of the things we have to understand about what we're doing today and witnessing today is that he is rising and coming up to another level. Apostolic authority is not a promotion. It's a function. We in the body of Christ get this idea that there's some kind of promotion in the fivefold. It's a function. He's rising to another responsibility. And so is Pastor Robin.
because they're one. So in this apostolic authority, it becomes more and more about what God's doing and not about us. And more and more, guess what? The congregation has to rise up and become an apostolic-minded people. Yes. So they're taking on more responsibility, a higher calling. How many of you hear what I'm saying? Yep. Come on. It's not about how we feel. It's about who we are. So apostles are continuously being refined through fire, life, hardships, disappointments, persecutions, rejections. How many of you know what that's about? Being mishandled. You as a people, as apostolic people, how many of you could say, yeah, I understand rejection, persecution? But you've come to another level, and it's a greater authority. And so you still have to reach out in spite of all of that. Amen? Amen. Still have to reach out, and they are going to reach out as mentors, pastors, a father and a mother in the Lord. Yes. And the apostolic authority, miracles, signs, and wonders should be evident. But in order to be evident, you have to be reaching out laying hands, telling people about Jesus, evangelizing, doing kingdom work. And this house is good for that. You do that. Amen? Amen. Now we will do it more. Yes. This house will be a builder. In this time and season as apostolic people, even the prophetic word for 2019 is building up. This house will be a building house. Not brick and mortar. Look around you, say, not brick and mortar. <laughs> but building people, building lives, touching lives. Praying, fasting, absolutely being consumed in this house with the presence of God. Casting nets of faith, love, hope, acceptance, and forgiveness. Will we do that, saints of God? Yes, come on. Then we can become that apostolic people. God spoke to my heart that this year in 2019, Covenant Christian Center International be, will experience a greater release of power and harvest. Hallelujah. But there will be more required and a greater cost to go higher. If that's you, lift your hands toward this apostle and his wife and say, we will go higher. We will go higher. We commit to going higher. We commit to going higher. We commit to building an apostolic center. We commit to building an apostolic center. As well as our local church. As well as our local church. We will be kingdom minded. Kingdom minded. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Look at this now in the King James Version. And they ministered unto the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Spirit said, he's about ready to get talked in the prophetic, set apart for me, Pastor Robin, Dr. Osterveen, for the work to which I have called them past tense and when they fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them they sent them away there's a calling and the sending of God amen and the difference in between is preparation amen I watched the two of you we credentialed you many, many, many years ago. I saw your church grow, Mount Clemens. You were with us for a couple of years running. I watched the growth and the increase, change of residence. <laughs> I watched God add to you, give you this beautiful church. Yes. These people that love you. I took note because we're proud of you. And I know if we are, God is more so yeah. proud of you. And what you've accomplished and like that death crawl 
I've seen you sacrifice, both of you, and pour yourselves out and carry loads and burdens. Amen. And as a token of our appreciation, we're going to get ready to turn them loose. I brought a little something for you. Go ahead, open it up. It's not a new gun. Everybody say amen. It's not a new bow. Amen. I look at the praise team and you're strong and you're anointed and you're one accord. You're disciplined and you have a soundness and a oneness to you. Thanks. Amen. Thanks. That's to be commended. You didn't get one. You didn't get two. But you got three swords. <laughs> two for you and one for her. Everybody say amen. That's the real thing. <laughs> one for long distance, one for close in fighting. Amen. And one to charge with. Amen. All right. Let's, let's pray and prophesy. Come on. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stir up the gifts within us here, Lord God, to minister life and truth. We thank you for the ring of authority that is on his hand, the new ring, Father God, that you've placed upon his hand. We thank you for this new mantle that you're giving him and this robe of right standing in the office of bishop and apostles. He starts that journey, crawls up that 100-yard line. Amen? Amen. We just stir it up with him in Jesus' name. Amen. scripture that we read in Zechariah, it says, Who, what is the mountain before you? It shall become a plain. And I turned my attention, because this is the scripture God gave me today for you. Isaiah 41, verse number 15. Behold, I make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, uh. not a dull one, a sharp one. Therefore, less energy, more response, more results. Having teeth you're not only going to have responsibility, but you're going to have authority. So you have teeth to do something with. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall fan them and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Apostle, I have a word for you from the book of Zechariah. Chapter 2 from verse 1. Then I raised my eyes and looked. And behold, a man with a measuring line. And so I said, Where are you doing? And he said, To measure Jerusalem. To see what is with and what its length. And there was the angel who talked with me, going with another angel, was coming to meet him and say to him, Run in the young man, speak, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, the Lord, will be the wall of fire all around it. Apostle, this is one thing that's coming from my spirit. That as the Lord have granted you a father's heart, it takes a father's heart to break across denominations. It takes a father's heart to see outside of yourself, to step into the apostle means to deal with roadblocks. To step into the apostle means to break off. Some folks are not going to like you. But it doesn't really matter. Because you see the big picture. And the big picture is not about you. When the Lord is expanding and asking you to go forth. And see new lines and see new territories. 
Only angels and God sees those territories and new lines. Speak to this young man. You will go forward. More souls will come. More people will come. But you will continue to expand that region. The Lord saying to you today, keep expanding his kingdom. Understand that the line you have now got to be stretched. When the line is stretched, more things are going to happen to you. You might not feel okay, but because you are stretching. But because you are stretching, he will build a wall of fire around you to protect you, to protect your household, to protect the church. Because when the church keeps expanding, things are going to happen. People will ask questions, but stand focused on what the Lord has given to you. Don't budge into the threats of the enemy because he said to you, he will build a wall of fire to protect you. Amen. The thing that's been on my mind, I hope I can say it. Before he was born, before he was even, um, how can I say, I, I, I prayed for a son that would be a priest unto God. And today is a fulfillment of even more in my prayer you are tenacious you are strong and I know that God has given you the wife that he desired for you to be your helpmate and I believe that God is saying together you will go forth in strength with that tenacious spirit and you will accomplish all that he has planned for you because of your obedience to his will. And I praise and I thank God for you, for both of you. An instructive comment and then a word of prophecy. In the spirit of what was just shared in the spirit of Hannah, the Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before you were formed in the womb, I called you. Your name means rock. And Jesus said, upon rocks will I build my church. The times that you... The scripture says that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. So what we recognize today is not something new in you. What we recognize today is the mantle that you are reaching for, that you have grasped. That mantle that will break yokes, even in your own life, but in those that follow you. The Lord would say, and what the Lord has spoken to me, is that his spirit, as in John 7, is like water. The Bible says that water symbolizes his spirit as it flows. But the further people get from God, when water becomes cold, because it's away from a source of heat, Water becomes ice, and ice is not only cold, but ice is hard. You've been surrounded by obstacles. You've been surrounded by a spiritual stench, as it were. But by the breath of his nostrils, he is calling you to a cold, hard people that are far away from God. Because your ministry is such that the word that is in you, the calling that is in you, is the only thing that can address that hardness. And they will become as ice that melts in your hands. 
as the Spirit of the Lord brings warmth into that challenging word, they will melt back into the state where God's Spirit can freely flow and the hardness will be gone. Amen. The, the cold will turn into warmth in this new dimension of ministry that God is calling you to. And even your wife shares in this ministry. The gentle spirit, I don't want to ruin your Bible, but the gentle spirit that is in you, the gentle spirit that is in you will complement your husband's ministry and it will be the warmth that will complement the edge, the sharp edge, the sharp word. The Bible says God brought Eve out of Adam, something that was already in him, he brought out of Adam as a reminder that only when they are together are they complete. And it will take your ministry to complete his to provide the warmth when there's a sharp word of rebuke to provide the warmth that will help in melting the hearts of those that God has called you both to, says the Lord. sat here this morning almost speechless listening to the words that have come forth so far you've heard from the throne of God I believe this morning the scripture God gave me before coming here was one that I'm sure you're familiar with as well from Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 Never forget, it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. See, you've known a life that you have shown forth in strength. You've shown forth in human power. I wouldn't want to meet you in a dark alley. <laughs> you, you have it. The temptation that you'll face on occasion is to slip back and try to use the old tools. They won't work. And to you especially, this is a challenge because it's awfully hard to be able to do things one way and knowing it's not the Lord, say no. The temptation will be strong. But God is going to bring forth from you a spirit of power. Yes, yes. A spirit of power. Not from the human muscle, but from the word of the Lord. I believe he's going to give you a word in season. A word in season. And you know the word. But again, it's got to be by my spirit, saith the Lord. And 
they're saying, I believe there's before the two of you that great opportunity. You're young, you love the Lord, you're ready to go. And what God has in store is even beyond what you prayed about and thought about. You'll know the walk of the Spirit of the Lord. The walk of our Lord was so distinguished in the natural. For when he came out of the water and that dove landed upon him, John gave these additional words. He said it stayed on him. Stayed on him. Wherever he went, it wasn't only in him, it was on him. The challenge of walking through this darkened world and understanding, realizing, knowing that it's only by the Spirit of the Lord that things will be accomplished in the supernatural way. And I believe they will. Peter learned that, didn't he? He learned there was a healing power that just came from his presence because of the dove that he was hosting. It's not easy to walk through this life and host the dove. But that's the only way. And remembering whatever we say, whatever we do, whatever we think, remember, you need the dove. Never, never leave us, O Lord. May God just bring a unity, a closeness to both of you, each for the other. And I know he will, because you love the Lord. And he has put within you a mighty calling, a calling. Of, see, I knew you when I was bigger than you. <laughs> You see what God hath done. <laughs> but I remember those little, little boys running around, you know. But that was good. <laughs> Getting you ready for this day. I love you both. I love you with all my heart. My prayers will be with you. Stand ready to help in whatever way I can. He has already put great people around you. Don't be afraid to draw on them. Don't be afraid to learn and continue to learn. Because he's going to give you a word, I believe, in season. A word in season. A word in season. You will not, you will not be just a speaker of a word. You'll be a speaker of the word. Yes. I, re I remember I remember one day early in my, my uh, pastoral ministry hearing myself pray and I knew it didn't come from the top. It came from within. And I said, Lord, Please make me, make me, Lord, a voice and not an echo. Come on. I said, Holy Spirit, what did I mean by what I just <laughs> prayed? What? And, and he said to me, the difference between a voice and an echo is the voice has the power and the spirit in it. By the untrained ear, the, the many may think that it's the echo that's important. No, it's the voice. And I believe that'll be so common to you. I believe you'll, you'll know that, even beyond what you have already. So once again, I. I'm not here to preach, but just to say I love
love you. And I'll be praying for you. Amen. 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 And if you're ever hearing a voice say, I told you so, remember it's me up there. Okay. <laughs> Bless the Lord. I love you, folks. God bless you so much. Don't you can't. Dr. O, Pastor Robin, hear this charge from the scriptures and from the Lord that has called you. Ministers gathered here have expressed confidence in your character, your devotion to Christ, his cause, and your ability to direct and promote the general affairs and interests of churches and ministries. You have been called to this responsibility by fellow ministers and overseers. Paul presents the qualifications of a bishop as follows. Must be above reproach, temperate, self-controlled, patient, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, and have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. The Evangel Association of Churches and Ministries that has ordained you assigns to you the following duties as apostle to model a life of spiritual maturity with competence in the areas of relationship, discernment, time usage, and encouragement. To serve as counselors for pastors, families, and ministers by building trust, by being a careful listener, and through mutual sharing. To equip ministers for ministry by encouraging them in planning, goal setting, and leadership development to stimulate congregations by your teaching and preaching, and to facilitate the selection of pastoral leadership, to share the Covenant Christian Center and its ministry's vision and mission so that a spirit of unity will be present among all members. My brothers and sisters, the scriptures command that we should not be hasty in admitting any person to governmental leadership in the Church of Jesus Christ. Therefore, before you receive this apostolic ministry, we call upon you to answer these questions in the fear of the Lord, that all here may know your mind and purpose concerning this sacred office of apostle. And so, Apostle Osterveen and Pastor Robin, will you please answer when I ask these questions? Your response will be, the grace of God called me to the office. Are you persuaded that you are called to this office of apostle by the church in accordance with the will of our Lord Jesus Christ? Will you endeavor to live holy, soberly, righteously, and godly as those of the church apostles 
so that you may be an example to all others in Christian living as one called to a position of Christian leadership. Will you instruct and father those and mother those under your care from the word of God into the edification of the whole church at large? Will you continue steadfastly to faithfully perform the duties assigned to you as apostles over the Covenant Christian Center, its vision, related ministries, according to the order and direction of the brethren in the body of Christ? Within your ability to do so, will you maintain and set forward quietness, love, and peace among all people, dealing justly and kindly with those in ministry and with all others over whom you have responsibility? People of God in this house, will you respond to these questions with, we will by God's help. Do you patrons of Covenant Christian Center under God accept Dr. Osterveen and Pastor Robin as your appointed leaders? And will you give them your ready cooperation and support as they seek to carry out their responsibilities? We will by God's help. Do you willfully commit to serve your apostolic overseer in acts of service, sharing the faith and financial support? We will by the grace. Do you willfully commit to pray for, encourage, and serve Apostle Osterveen, Pastor Robin, and Covenant Christian Center's church leaders? We will, by the grace of God. Then in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, by the authority vested in these overseers here, we hereby install Dr. Apostle Craig Osterveen over Covenant Christian Center, over all its ministries, and over those churches he has authority over this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord says, this is the day that I have chosen, and it has been long coming. And yea, you have gone through much, but I am going to continue to build and to strengthen and to make you into that leader and to that apostle that I have called you to this office. And yea, you shall see my glory in this house because it will be my goodness. It will be my mercy and my grace. And it will be poured out through the two of you first and then on through the people. And I will cause change, incredible change, to come to this house because many will not just come to know me, but they will be discipled and they will go out and they will bring others in. For this also will be the house of the return and the prodigal shall come back home, says the Lord. And I tell you, son and daughter, my hand is upon you for good. I tell you, son and daughter, that I am going to put blessings in your hands, but I am also going to cause your lives together to be increased, advanced, and you will not even recognize your one another in the months to come, for you will look back and say, surely the Lord has moved in this place and in our house. So son and daughter rejoice because my hand of favor is on you and you will be the builders I have called you to be. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's lay hands last time. And the spirit of grace would say unto thee, knowing that I've shifted and moved and changed and rearranged, you're not (laughs) missed me in any way. You're in my prophetic timetable. You're at the right place to do the right thing at the right time. 
It has been a multitude of hardships to get here, says the Lord. But get ready for what's ahead, says the Lord. The next three to five years will be a time of development and growth and change, says the Lord, and expansion like you've not imagined before. This building will not be able to hold in the seasons ahead those that I will bring forth. Lord, since I've called you the broken, the bruised, the disenfranchised, the oppressed, I've put tools within your hands, says the Lord. Tools of deliverance, tools of freedom, speaking words of life and freedom to tell them to repent and turn their lives around. Lord, I've given you that message. Let it burn within you. Let the fire come forward, says, get, let the fire come forward, says the Lord, and get ready for divine appointments that I will make. Lord, says, I only called you to this house, not only to this people, but I've called you. I will begin to gather other churches and other ministries. Some will be homegrown and come here and you'll rise up and send out and others will be that I will gather to you says the Lord and you will build and you will build apostolically you will build communically says the Lord get ready for this I will do and this I have graced you to I will give you hearts for the broken and the bruised and the disenfranchised pastors the broken and bruised and disenfranchised people and ministers in full time ministry they will come and they will seek for they have met a couple that is no compromise <clears throat> that there's no injustice within that there's no slack within sold out radical sons and daughters Lord says can't you hear the sound listen to the sound can't you hear the angels over the trees that are coming the armies of God that are going out before you to prepare the battlefields that you will walk in says the Lord I will give you strategic wisdom and apostolic insight to do warfare to do battle not only for your own house and for your own people but for others you will have hearts to be poured into other ministers and pastors those that bleed and those that say is there a better way I can't take anymore you'll blow life and encouragement and Lord says I'm not taking away I'm adding to the prophetic within your life the Lord says now the two will be married the prophetic and the apostolic and I'll give you apostolic insight to churches apostolic insight to the hearts of people and what keeps them back Lord I've groomed you in deliverance I've groomed you in your healing Lord I've put words within your mouth get ready to hear says the Lord <clears throat> you'll come to people says the Lord and I will call you to rise up rise up as the angels go forth can't you hear the sound of the river of life coming down? Can't you hear the sound over this church? New direction it will take. The increase in the blessings that I will pour out upon your lives and upon those in this congregation. And when you look back three to five years from now, you say, oh my God, look how far we have come. Look how far you have come, says the Lord. Look where I brought you from, says the Lord. And look where I'm about to take you. And the Lord says, speak. Speak life. This generation, this nation needs what I've deposited within you. Speak to those that are dead. Speak life. Roll away the stone of apathy. Roll away the stone of indifference. Roll away the stone of coldness in their hearts, says the Lord. And pull out and bring forth new life. Lazarus, come forth. You'll speak to them and they'll come out of their tombs and they'll resurrect. No longer will there be tombs with dead man's bones in them, but you'll speak life into people, life into churches, life into ministries. The Lord says, rise up. You hear the cry, the hearts of the ministers. You hear the cries, the hearts of the people. Lord says, I enlarge, I expand, I expect you to occupy fresh and new territory. Get ready. Not only 50 miles north, south, east, west for your church. It will go to the other ends of this nation and overseas. You will travel once again overseas and you will plant and you will build and you will encourage and you will uplift. And the miracle signs and wonders will increase. The demonic will be loosed off people's lives. And you will see the physical healings begin to arise within this house and with where you go. I will open up doors of opportunity and draw them to you. Don't be in a hurry. Stay committed and plowed into what you've given you. Get ready for the best is yet ahead, the best time. Rise up and receive a fresh grace and a fresh anointing upon your life. For it's a new season, a new day, and a new hour, says the Spirit of Grace. Amen. Everybody say grace, grace, grace. Grace, grace, grace.
Congratulations. Thank you, Presbyters, for the accurate words and the words of prayers. Amen. I got to do one more thing. Lord just reminded me. I'll put up the last scripture. Did you ever hear anybody ever say, let's take a free will offering? We've all heard that, haven't we? Have you not all heard that? Let me give you a Bible verse for that. Where would you find a Bible verse for a free will offering? Let me give you one. It's a Bible. Cheryl, would you read it for me? Come over here. My blonde girlfriend, come on over here. Cheryl. And when, and when you will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord. Say, sacrifice of thanksgiving. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. Offer it at your own will. Mm. Offer it at your own will. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is to take an envelope. Do you have envelopes here? I want you to give a free will offering. Offer, offer it at your own will. It is appropriate. We're making the checks payable to Covenant Christian Center. Not to Dr. Oshami, but to the church. Amen? Amen? And we're going to receive a free will offering. Amen of Thanksgiving. How many are thankful for today? Amen. Whether you got baptized or Holy Ghost, whether you rededicated your life, whether you made a fresh commitment, whatever, we're thankful.